Yes, Linda, if you can stay with us here on the stage, uh, so I won't let you go yet. Uh, but also I would ask uh, actually Rainer to, uh, to also come and join us here uh, on the stage because it's time now to wrap up the entire day here. But we thought about like um, usually how different kind of uh, events and, and conferences are ending is that everybody are just saying, you know, thank you very much and then goodbye. But uh, we thought that like as we were leading also uh, the three different uh, panel discussions to kind of reflect back what we learn today and what would uh, be the main kind of uh, outcomes of, of this event as well because again uh, we're organizing this already third year uh, but I hope also these discussions are actually you know leading to some kind of actions later as well. So uh, I started uh, today when uh, I did the opening remarks uh, just bringing some of the numbers and, uh, and like I said there is four million people uh, missing working in cybersecurity around one, one million here, uh, here in Europe. And uh, just some of the statistics, only in 12 countries out of 27 in Europe, cybersecurity is part of official curriculum, which is like basically nothing. Uh, at the same time, now we've been focusing on, you know, the Nordic side, the Nordic Baltic uh, side, which is again in, in, uh, in through a lot of kind of different conversations that we had today, uh, was brought it out as well that uh, actually we are the leading region here uh, that uh, is putting most of the focus and then he's trying to do as much as possible to especially start again with, you know, teachers uh, and making sure that they would have enough skills to actually help the students. And then, of course, also making it more attractive for students to, you know, learn more about the skills. And again, when it comes to AI and it's also involvement in, in the entire cybersecurity field, then really helping the students to uh, to learn these skills and, and even organizing events like we have today as well here. So I think in, in terms of like the future steps as well, uh, we should stay as, as a leading region here, but of course also supporting the rest of the Europe. Uh, so I think uh, again, uh, the think tank uh, that is also, you know, made by the Nordic Council of Ministers is, is in incredible and, and really that we can share these best practices, what is working, what is not working. And I feel especially for my panel the main takeaway there was was really that in order to get rid of this kind of fear and misunderstanding of, of AI and its role in cybersecurity and in general like you know mis and disinformation uh, campaigns and being a bit like more aware uh, what's happening around us and how to really use this uh, techno technological solutions as as more uh, as as kind of opportunities for us to to uh, to be better uh, to do better uh, so we really do have to invest as much as possible into education, but again, starting with the teachers, uh, because they are, at the end of the day, the ones that are helping our students across in different, either it's in a high school level, either it's a university level, uh, or even like kindergarten, as is in Estonia, we also do a lot of robotic classes for uh, for students, uh, not the students, but but small kids in, uh, in, in the kindergarten, so that they would start as early as possible, and, and would have this interest coming as, as early as possible. And I, especially as you brought it out as well, like like, there are still very few women in the sector, so I feel also, again, in our Nordic, uh, Scandinavian side of the world, we should lead the way and show that it's okay to be a woman and, and be standing and talking about this, uh, these matters, because that's, uh, that's something that is very essential. And it, again, I, now I was just talking, but, but maybe a reflection also uh, from your panel, what was the main takeaway? And, and especially if you could kind of reflect this to the audience and saying that we have people, again, from the policy sector, people that have backgrounds of law, uh, people that are educators, uh, hopefully some of the students also with us here. Um, so some of the recommendations, what they should, if they go home today and, and, and they go back to either work or school or, you know, whatever they, they, uh, they spend there every day, uh, what they should do differently. Uh, should they invest their time more in, into something or, or just kind of the key takeaways for, for this entire event that we had? Thank you. Like from the perspective of uh, what we discussed in the legal and ethical uh, panel, First of all, uh, I guess the key takeaway is that the world has changed a lot really fast. Uh, we see that the legal system is kind of resolving those issues, but not in a perfect way. Uh, the key takeaway, what everybody should think about is, first, uh, when you use AI, know what you're doing, but... Uh, don't think that it does your job. Uh, from the perspective of what we should teach the youth, 
uh, we should absolutely 100% uh, push them to use it as soon as possible. However, it has to be controlled. So uh, they must understand the tool. You don't teach the tool by forbidding it. You teach the tool by giving them the tool in some settings and not in others. They need to understand that they have to know the contract between them and the AI, and they have to understand what, uh, what are the rights they have with uh, the creation. From the perspective of uh, the part of the discussion that we had about hacking, the key takeaways are that we have to teach that ethical intent doesn't mean that the hacking itself is ethical. The ground, the legal ground for, for the hack is the way you see it as ethical hunting, hacking or white hat hacking. And we need to teach this principle. And also we need to teach the youth to understand the, the terms that are relevant to different bug bounty programs and so forth. So these are from the content, but on a wider scale, uh, we are in a really bad situation, in my opinion, where uh, we are talking about a topic that's uh, really moving fast. Uh, I, being from a competitive sector, I say that we are not able to change the school system like, just like this. So we need teacher activism. They need to be the active parts pushing these topics already in, even if they're not in the curriculum. And we need also like systematic work, changing and updating the curriculum because there's a lot you can learn from everywhere, but uh, your tools must be modern. Yeah, and I especially wanted to bring one more thing as well uh, is in terms of like the policy making side, either if it's creating new laws or again the new policies that are regulating the use either of the AI or also the cyber international laws that need to be implemented in in a lot of senses as well. Like and again encouraging because I've been sitting on a on a side of the table that I've been writing these policies and I think the biggest thing there because I don't know the entire market, so how can I write the policies and the laws that are right for the market? Mm -hmm. and and, and that's, again, getting all the stakeholders on a table that actually are able to give uh, their kind of, uh, you know, input there as well and really telling us what needs to be done, what are the threats that they are facing and how we can educate each other also in a lot of ways there. So, so that's, I, I think, also kind of the part that I, I wanted to bring it out as well. But, but Linda, uh, from your side as well, you ended a panel discussion with, you know, uh, about the entire job that happens that, that you do at the think tank and so on. So what would be your kind of recommendations? And you already said uh, to you, all, all of these people as well that if there is anybody in this market that wants to be part of this, reach out and like we can we can find a place for, for everybody in that sense, but, but maybe just come up the takeaways or suggestions from our side. So I think I, I will want to address the different target groups listening in. So dear policymakers who listen to, to us on the stage, I hope you heard that we need support for this work. Uh, we need, there needs to be funding for collaboration uh, across borders. There needs to be funding in the respective countries for pilot projects, not only for the long term, but we need to get going tomorrow uh, with initiatives if we need to face the, the challenges and, and, and the threat landscape that we're seeing. So please work on that in the respective countries. We'll do our best to make some recommendation and, and you can see that we have very motivated people. Then for the students uh, in this room or our youngsters in, in school, I hope you have enjoyed the cyber battle on, on, on this side, but I also hope that you heard the members talking about that this is not only the only thing you can do when talking about cybersecurity, that we're seeing a lot of challenges that uh, needs to be addressed out of uh, in the companies and organization because cybersecurity lives in all of the departments. It's not isolated to people working with very uh, technical areas within cybersecurity. So we need you, even if you think that um, you're interested into communication and marketing, there is a role for you working with cyber awareness. If you're interested in law and in, in this field, there is a, a job for you within government risk and compliance and so forth. So please have an open mind to cybersecurity because it's such a, a broad field and we really need motivated young people to, uh, to pursue this way. 
Then for the teachers, I also hope you heard uh, the members saying, we need you. We need you as good ambassadors for the kids, uh, training them uh, with skills within cybersecurity. But we also know that it's a big challenge because you don't know, not necessarily have the skills to do it. The good part is that there is lots of good uh, basis uh, material uh, accessible. Um, if you don't have it in your given country, I know that you can visit Inisa's uh, webpage where they have actually mapped uh, all of the different educational material that they uh, know of in the different countries, and you can map it by language, etc. Um, so I hope you get some confidence in that you can also teach even though you don't have an education within it. And maybe you can write us if you need inspiration for what we have done in other countries or need access to material. So I hope you go out of this room and are, are inspired to do more. For the companies listening in, I really hope that uh, you heard that you need to take on a responsibility because we need you, we need your cooperation together with academia uh, in terms of that the students get a, a realistic idea of what does it mean to work with cybersecurity and what are the incidents actually about, what are they going to tackle in, in the real world, um, and also that you cannot always hire a, um, a profile with five years of experience. We also need the juniors to, uh, to get out to get internships and, and junior jobs, and you have a responsibility uh, on this side as well. So I hope you are motivated to work on, on that as well in, in your organization. So I think with that said, Yes. That was the reflection from our side. Yeah, uh, I saw that Reiner uh, Sorry, wanted to say something additional as well. Nina, you inspired me <laughs> to give a message to teachers as well. Uh, teachers and lawyers have the same vocational disease, perfectionism. You must do everything perfect because the grades are given based on performance. But the problem with that is that you st like put the bar for yourself also really, really high. Uh, but with these topics where the world is moving actually too fast, throw the perfectionism out of the window. Be rather there for the discussion uh, and be open to discuss topics perhaps you don't know 100% about because this creates more value than deciding not to talk because you don't know the full thing. You are not able to know the full thing because what you learned yesterday is already outdated tomorrow in this business. And in terms of especially for the international collaboration as well, there's something that I've always bring, brought it out as well when I've been speaking in different stages, is that it doesn't matter if it's a company that is working with different partners or is it a country that is part of either the EU or NATO, the weakest country or the weakest organization or the weakest employee in your company with lacking of knowledge in cybersecurity will define how strong your entire organization, your country, or your company is. And that's kind of the sad reality. And that's why, again, the skill cap side is a huge problem that we need to find solution as soon as possible and, and really trying to find investments and, and, and experts. And, and I really liked also even calling like an ambassadors in this sector that are the spokespeople in, in, in this sector and really attracting more and more young people to join this, uh, join this world of cyber because it's kind of cool, right? All right. Uh, but now it's actually really the time to wrap everything up here. Uh, so from my side, I would like to say a massive, massive, massive thank you to everybody who joined us here, either today, today in a room or also virtually. We had more than 2,000 people uh, online also listening to uh, us. So that is a very big number, and I'm very, very happy about that. Uh, and of course, also to all of the organizers, uh, so uh, the Nordic Council of Ministers and also C uh, CTF uh, Tech that has been part of this event as well. And then, of course, all the speakers and moderators of, of to, uh, today's event as well. It wouldn't have been possible uh, without uh, you. So uh, if you could join me now for a massive round of applause for everybody that have been part of this uh, event as well today. And, and maybe if just as a last uh, kind of sentence, so really, if you go home, do something differently that you did yesterday. Uh, so really take something uh, from this event. And we really do hope that these discussions will not just end here in this room, but also will continue outside and will inspire people to actually do better and be better. So enjoy the rest of the day and go check also the award ceremony at uh, 4.30. So thank you. Thank you very much.